All right, let's get started with step number one. We are going to take the card slots panel and on the wrong side, We will use the card slots panel pattern piece to measure each of the dashed lines or mark them on the back. I'm sorry. So I'm just using my Dritz chalk pencil and along the top edge first, I'm just going to make a mark at each dashed line. Okay. And then I'll slide the pattern piece up and make a mark along the bottom of each dash line. Okay. And now I will take a ruler. And I will line it up between each lines and just draw a line straight down. It's important to be accurate with your lines um, so that your card slots don't come out crooked. Okay, so I have each of the lines drawn. And now, first we will fold along this first line. So right along the line, we will fold the fabric in half, wrong sides together. It's hard to see. I try to check to make sure it's folded directly along that line. Okay, and now I'm going to press that fold um, you can use steam for this I'll spritz it with a little bit of water just to make sure it's really pressed nicely all right so then the second line is here underneath and we are going to fold right sides together. So there's your first fold and now we'll fold this back under. So this part here is right sides together and that line will be directly along that fold. And then I'm going to press that nice and flat. And you want to make sure everything stays straight here and that you continue to fold directly along the lines. So it only leaves a one quarter inch gap at the top of one card slot to the top of the next card slot. So that's one way that you can check to make sure that you have um, folded properly. All right, now the next one will be folded right side together. So fold this under directly along that line. All right, and then wrong side together along the next line. Have everything turned around here. Sorry, put it this way so we can see. Okay, and that should be one quarter of an inch, and it is. All right, 
right, one more time, right sides together. And then the last one will be wrong sides together and we'll fold all the way down the back. And this will be your last fold. All right, now I'm just going to press the top of each card slot nicely. And this should measure 4.25 inches tall and 3.25 inches wide to the end of the top piece. So this backing piece then, we're going to go ahead and trim that. Um, it's easier to press everything and fold it and then trim when you're finished. Um, just for any inaccuracies while you're folding, you don't want that backing piece to be too short when you get to the end. You just give everything a good press one more time. All right, and then I'm just going to trim that piece to be even with the front as such. Okay, so next we will go to the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch each of the card slots. We will begin sewing by top stitching along the top of each of the card slots. Um, I put my sewing machine on a longer stitch length, so I'm using a stitch length of four. Um, and what I do is fold the card slots back out of the way, and I'll do the first one first. And I just use a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I like to always trim my threads as I go, so that way when I am done sewing, I don't have threads hanging everywhere to trim off. So again, I just fold the other card slots out of the way, and I'm doing the second card slot. card slot. Okay, so once those are all top stitched, you will fold this back up. I'm going to grab a couple of clips and you want to make sure that this is still situated, that the card slots are situated so that the entire panel is three and one quarter of an inch wide, which it is. Make sure that everything's even. And I'm going to place a couple of clips on the raw edges. Now I'm just going to base the sides together using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Um, if your presser foot pressure is adjustable, I like to um, lower that pressure for this part so that it's not pushing down so hard on the card slots that it will cause them to shift because they can't shift while you're top stitching and then they'll be crooked. And that's just a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And you can use your longest stitch length since it's basting. I just left mine on four. If 
you notice that it looks like anything is shifting, you can um, lift up your presser foot and readjust. Okay, so now we have the card slots completed. I am going to set that aside for now. And we want our two ID window frame panels. I should have all of my pieces. Let me grab everything. All right, so I'm going to keep everything here. Um, and I will use the ID window frame pattern piece. Um, yours won't look exactly like that. This is my one I made to do my first test of this, so. All right, you will take your ID window frame panels, place them right sides together. Only one of these has interfacing on it. Um, I use that one as the top. So I'm going to place these right sides together and I'm actually going to put a couple of pins All right, and then you will place your ID window pattern piece on top, and I've cut out the center. Oh, these pins are gonna get in my way. Let's take those out. All right, so on the side with the interfacing, I place my ID window pattern piece with the center cut out, and I'm just going to trace around the inside of this rectangle. Okay, and now I'll pin it. Just make sure all of your raw edges are lined up. I'll throw a couple clips on here too, since I don't have any other pins over here. Okay, and now we're just going to sew directly along that rectangle. I use a shorter stitch length for this. Um, I'll probably go to a two and a half and just do a couple stitches and then back stitch and then stitch all the way around the rectangles. Um, you want to stop at the corners with your needle down and lift your presser foot to turn the piece and then stitch down to the next corner. If you don't end up exactly at the corner, I like to do another stitch and um, I'll even adjust it so that it ends right on the corner. Go ahead and trim these threads. I'm going to take the pins and clips off. And now inside of this rectangle, we want to take a roller and you'll measure one quarter inch in from each of the sewn lines and you'll draw a line. Okay. 
Okay, and then that does not have to be exact, but you want it to be about a quarter of an inch inside of the sewn lines. And then from each of the corners of the rectangle that you just drew, you will draw a line to the corner of the sewn rectangle. So this is very similar to making an interior zipper pocket. So we are going to now cut this rectangle out, the one that we just drew, the smaller one. So I'm just going to cut directly along those lines. Once you've cut that out, and I cut through both layers because we have two panels here sewn together. And now I'm going to cut up to that corner in each of the corners. Do not trim through your stitching. So get as close as you can without cutting through it. And the closer you get, the better that your corners will look once you've turned it right side out. Okay, so I've trimmed each, or cut into each of the corners. Okay, so now we are going to flip the ID window frame panels wrong sides together. Um, what I will do when I press this is press each of these. Um, and it helps if the whole thing is just kind of damp. So I spray it with water first. And then I'm going to press each of these flat so that it will be kind of, I don't know, they'll be kind of standing up. And then once that part is pressed, so each of those are like ready to flip kind of, then you'll just go ahead and flip the side like this so that it's right side out. And everything just flips right side out. So, and then just take it one side at a time um, and press it well as you go. And I will be back once I have that flipped. Okay, so I turned the entire um, ID, whatever these are called, ID window frame panels, wrong sides together through the hole in the center. And I pressed that all really nice and flat. So just take your time and work with it until you get it nice and flat. And then I went ahead on down to step number seven, um, where I pressed the long raw edges along the left side in by one quarter of an inch. So really either long side can be, so if there's a certain way you like it, just take one um, long straight edge and press those edges under by a quarter of an inch so that they're both enclosed inside. See, and then you have a nice clean edge here. And then we are going to top stitch along that edge. And you can uh, stick some pins in this if that would help you. And I'm using a stitch length of four again. Okay, now step number eight. We are going to place the ID window vinyl over the rectangle opening from the back side. So this side is my top, um, which is the side that has the interfacing attached. So this is my back, and we are going to take the ID window vinyl piece. I have this um, pink color. It's a pink clear ID window vinyl. Um, I purchased this from So Hungry Hippie or Hungry Hippie Sews. I'm not sure which. Um, if you Google So Hungry Hippie, you'll find her. She has a lot of colored clear vinyls. Um, so we're just going to center this vinyl over that rectangle opening. And then I use washi tape. You could use um, 
any kind of tape really, I think um, masking tape would work well to hold this in place. You can't really pin through the vinyl. I suppose you could put a couple clips um, along the sides, but I find that the tape works really well. And I just keep it back out of where the seam allowance will be from top stitching. Okay. And then you can trim off the extra tape if you want. Um, since it's spacing up, it should be okay. And now I'm just going to top stitch around that rectangle opening with the vinyl in the middle. And you're using a 1 8 inch seam allowance again. And I still have my stitch length set on four. And you don't have to worry about a Teflon foot or anything for this step since the foot is not actually touching the vinyl at all. If you find that it's sticking to the bed of your sewing machine, if it's hot or humid, um, sometimes it will stick. You can just go ahead and place a piece of tissue paper underneath and then it should glide smoothly. And you wanna stop at each corner again with your needle down and rotate. So if your stitching doesn't stop in the exact right place, go ahead and um, adjust that so that it's right where you want it to be. And then just make sure you stop with your needle down when you turn the corner. I just put a couple back stitch stitches in at the beginning and end. All right, and now you can go ahead and trim your threads and peel all the tape off. Fabric's fraying a lot, so um, I'm going to just trim this up a little bit just to get some of these strings off of it. Not necessary. Okay, and also if um, your ID window vinyl extends far enough back that it's going to end up in the seam allowance you'll want to from the wrong side fold I have tape stuck on my finger okay fold the fabric back out of the way so that you don't accidentally cut it and then you can just go ahead and trim some of that vinyl off okay sorry if you can hear that it's uh, December 1st right now so the first of the month they test the um, tornado sirens at 12 o'clock noon and apparently it's noon. All right so you can just trim away some of the extra vinyl. All right and now you just have to make sure that any part where you're pressing this you're extra careful not to melt that window. Um, some of the like commercial um, wallets that have ID slots in them with the clear vinyl They'll have like a hole cut in the center to help you slide your card out. So if you have like punches, you could go ahead and cut a hole in the center of that. I don't, and I know that with scissors, I would just make it look messy. So I'm gonna leave it how it is. Okay, so step number 10, we are going to take the, I'm going to set these little labels aside as I go. You can save those to use next time. So I'm looking for the ID slot backing panel, which is here. This is a piece that does have interfacing attached. You want to go to your ironing board and press this piece in half, wrong sides together, um, bringing the two short ed edges together. So it'll be pressed in half like this. Okay, and once that's pressed in half, go ahead and top stitch along the fold. 
My stitch length is still set to four. And I'm using a one eighth, one eighth of an inch seam allowance, which is what we use for all top stitching in this pattern. Okay, and now once that's top stitched, you can take your ID window and place it on top. You wanna match up the top raw edge, the left raw edge, and the bottom raw edge. I'm going to grab a few pin or clips. And then we'll just go ahead and clip that together. Top, the left. And the bottom. Okay, now we will use a 1 8 inch seam allowance to base these together. Um, you can change to the longest stitch length for this, which my longest is 5. And this is just to help hold everything together. It's important to baste. Um, so that all of the layers stay together and don't shift as you sew other parts. Because with the wallet, with ID windows and card slots, there are several layers. And things can shift as you sew. The basting is very important. Alright, from my threads. Alright, so now we have our ID window completed. We have our card slots completed. We are on step number 12. So now we want card slot back number two. Um, which is this piece. We are going to take the card slots and line them up along the left side. Oh my god, when I just said to top stitch this, I called that the left and it's the right. Okay, I do know my left and right. Um, so go ahead and lay the card slots on card slot back number two, right side up, and pin, pin them in place along the left side. The actual left side. Okay, and then we want the, in the ID window, um, completed portion and the card slots portion are both the same width. You'll notice 3.25 inches. And this helps the wallet to be even um, when you fold it in half, the finished wallet. So that's important that they're even. All right, and we're just going to clip this in place along the right side. And you're just matching the right edge, the top, and the bottom. And there will be a gap between the two. Um, this should be, let's see how wide that is. One inch wide. So you'll have a one inch gap in the center. So now go ahead and baste these to the card slot back number two um, using a one eighth inch seam allowance. I'm just going to start here with the ID slot. And I'm still just using my longest stitch length and a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And it's important here to use the 1 8 inch seam allowance so that your seams are not visible on the finished wallet because everything is sewn together using a quarter inch seam allowance. These wallets are great because they're small enough to slide into a back pocket. Um, if you're carrying a smaller bag or like a fanny pack maybe in the summertime, they're small enough to slide in there. Um, I may do another larger size wallet 
that has a similar look to the outside, the envelope style. Um, I don't know. We'll see. My mom asked for one that has room for her checkbook in it, so, which I don't carry my checkbook with me anymore, but I thought maybe I'll make a larger wallet then that she could use. So, of course, that would be another pattern. Okay, and I'm just trimming some of those strings off. Okay, so now we want card slot back number one. And this is a piece that does not have any interfacing on it. We are going to place this right sides together with the card slots panel. And I'm going to clip along the top and bottom edge only. Card slot panel number one, or card slot back number one, is wider. Um, well, I guess it's taller than card slot back number two. So it's not going to be laying flat once it's all pinned in place. It will bubble up in the center, and that is correct and how it should be. So now we are going to put this on a shorter stitch length, um, probably about three, and just sew using a quarter inch seam allowance along the top and bottom edges only. And you want to back stitch at the start and stop of each line. here as well. Now we want to go ahead and turn this right side out. You don't trim any of these seam allowances down. Leave them. It's a little tricky to turn it with the thickness. And now I'm going to press this flat carefully, avoiding this vinyl. The way the um, piece on the back is larger, it creates a sort of a binding without actually doing any binding. So that's nice. Um, so we'll just go press this all flat. So everything is pressed well. This is the bottom. This is the top. Um, again, I'm going to trim off some of these strings. All right. And then we're going to top stitch along the top edge only. And I use a stitch length of four for that. And I'm just going one eighth of an inch from the edge. my threads. Okay, so now next is step 15. All right, step number 15. We want to take the main panel lining right side up and draw a line across the panel that's three inches up from the bottom. So not three inches, three eighths of an inch. So here I'm going to use this line will be visible, so you want to use something that is water soluble or irons away or is erasable. Um, 
I'm going to use this Ultimate Marking Pencil. It's white and it irons off, and it really does. Um, I don't think it comes back. It's like waxy, almost like a crayon. Um, it leaves a pretty thick line though, so I'm moving my ruler down a little bit so that the line will actually be 3 eighths of an inch and not... Look, with all my friends' things, I said that like Chandler, so it will actually be 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to draw that line all the way across. Alright, so you see that line? Um, put my pencil away. So now I want to take my... Um, completed card slots panel, I guess we'll call that, and line it up with that line and line up the um, left side that has the card slots on it with the left raw edge of the um, lining main panel. And we are going to clip this in place along that left edge only. And this panel is a little bit longer, and that is correct. That's how it should be. We are going to base the left edges together only. Do not sew anything along the bottom at this point. And I'm using a 1 8 inch seam allowance here. Probably should have had enough foresight to get a zipper out before I got this far, but I didn't. Um, so you want to... Oh, okay. So we are actually going to set this aside. And we are going to go on to our main panel exterior, which is this piece. We need the facing, which is nothing but a piece of interfacing. Okay, and you want to place your facing glue side up, and you're matching this to the side that is not going to be the flap. So this side I want to be the flap, so I'm going to put the facing on the other end of the main panel exterior. They're right sides together, and I'm just matching up that angled edge. I'm going to clip that in place. going to use a shorter stitch length and a quarter inch seam allowance. You know, actually, I'm going to change my thread really quick. I don't want to stitch through this with the white thread. I have a um, darker gray thread. Of course, it went all the way under my shelf back here. Oh, gross. Okay, let's get the gray bobbin. Now I'm going to sew along the angled edge only using a one quarter inch seam allowance. You want to back stitch at the certain stop.
take your time um, going around the corner, the curved end. I will do like one stitch at a time. I'll lift my presser foot up to adjust um, just because you want that angle to look nice when you press it. So now we want to trim this seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch, especially along the curve at the top. And this will just help it to lay nice and flat. So just be careful not to trim through any of your stitches. All right. So now we are going to go to the iron. I'm going to press this interfacing um, the facing piece to the back side and turn this right side out. It helps me to have it slightly damp and then I roll the edges between my fingers um, to get it to lay nice and flat. And then once you have everything laying nice and flat, go ahead and press this interfacing piece to the back and fuse it in place. All right, so I've pressed the entire facing piece to the wrong side and press well. You see that we have a nice angle and the facing is all fused down to the wrong side. So now we are going to take our exterior accent panel, which I use the lining fabric for mine. We want to draw a line that is one half inch up from the bottom. And just draw that line all the way across the panel. This line will not be visible so it doesn't matter what you use to mark it. All right, and then we want to place the exterior main panel on top of the exterior accent panel, matching these corners up with the line that you just drew. And then we are just going to pin that in place. Once you have this pinned, um, I like to confirm that it's straight, that you didn't move anything. Um, so I just checked that the bottom edge was straight. And now I'm going to top stitch through, oh, through the main panel and then through the exterior accent panel, um, one eighth of an inch from the edge of the exterior main panel. So I'm going to use a stitch length of four and just starting right here at the top edge. I'm going to back stitch a couple stitches since this is holding those pieces together. And just top stitch right along the edge. And again, when I get to the curved point at the end, I will do my stitches like one stitch at a time and lift my presser foot up to rotate after each stitch so that I can keep everything at a 1 8 inch seam allowance and have a nice curve there in my stitches. Back stitch a couple times. And then I'll trim my threads. Okay, so we are now, that was step number 19, step number 20. So to reduce some of the extra bulk, um, we're going to flip this over and we have this extra piece of the accent panel that is um, under the main panel. And you'll just go ahead and carefully trim that away without trimming through your exterior main panel or the other part of the contrast or accent panel. And I'm just doing this to reduce some of the bulk. You want the least amount of bulk as possible 
um, since it's such a small project. Okay, so I'm just trimming that away and I discard that. And here's what we're left with. So now we want to install the female side of our magnetic snap. Um, okay, so I have my magnetic snap pieces. Um, since we're using Decoville for the, inter the stabilizer in the wallet, um, I go ahead and cut a couple scraps of this to use to help secure um, the placement of our snaps. So we are going to go ahead and measure 1.75 inches down from this um, top straight edge and centered. So let's see. Centered and 1.75 inches down. And I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at that point, which should be centered right on the edge of this tab. And then we are going to take the washer side of the magnetic snap. And we want to use that to mark the prong placements. All right, so on the back of this mark, I'm going to install this scrap of Decoville, which will just help um, to secure the placement. Okay, and then I take my seam wrapper, which is nowhere to be found. All right, we'll use this one. I usually use a regular seam wrapper. Um, and then just cut through on those dashed lines for the prong placement very carefully. Um, if you choose to, at this point, you can go ahead and install or put some um, fray check or other seam fray blocking liquid on those marks where you just cut. Install the female half of the magnetic snap. Press it through those slots. Put a washer on the back. And then personal preference, I don't know if there's a reason. I think a lot of people will close these um, together into the middle. I like to press them open for my wallets anyway because it's not as bulky. I don't know if there's a one way that's better than the other. So there we have the female side of the magnetic snap installed. Okay, now I'm going to set that part aside. And now we are going to um, make the zipper and the zipper tabs, which maybe we'll come back and that will be the third video. Um, so we have most of our exterior assembled, most of our interior, interior assembled. We have the flap lining, zipper pocket lining that are not attached yet, and the zipper tabs are not made yet. So we'll go ahead and start the next video with that.